Hi there, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Manx, and I welcome you guys to yet another Fire Emblem character spotlight. This one has been requested a lot, and I can't really understand why, or maybe I just don't want to understand why. This is actually a pretty tricky spotlight for me to do, since the character in question has very little fleshed out backstory and is not very present in the game itself, but hey, I live to serve. Today we're checking out everyone's favorite little invoker, Jenny, so let's get ready to roll. Cheer up! I'm here for you! Jenny is a 15-year-old girl from the island of Novus. She grew up at Noma's monastery alongside Celica, Bowie and May. Jenny was dropped off at the monastery when she was very young, and from the looks of things, she didn't see much of her parents at all growing up. This made Jenny shy, timid and insecure, but she would eventually forge a strong bond with Celica, who she treated as a big sister. She would also eventually become good friends with the two mages, Bowie and May as well. When Celica decided to leave for the Temple of Mila to solve the mystery of the failing crops, Jenny joined her on her journey to heal their wounds. In Gaiden, Jenny was depicted as a petite young girl with purple eyes and short pink hair put up in a ponytail. She was clad in a light pink dress with gold patterns embroidered onto its sleeves and neckline. She was depicted holding a small rod or wand with a pink jewel on top of it. Come echoes, she has been redesigned into a girl with physically many of the same features, but with short, curly, light pink hair and brown eyes. She is now wearing a salmon-colored dress with more detailed golden design. She now has the side of her left leg showing and has traded her wand for a short staff. She also wears a necklace. Jenny is a gentle, shy, soft-spoken and timid young girl. She has issues with her self-confidence due to being abandoned at an early age, and is shown to have issues dealing with older women, particularly Sonia, who reminds her a lot of her own mother. Jenny also seemingly does not want a relationship with a guy around her own age, as she states she would prefer to be with someone older who could take care of her. This again shows Jenny's longing for a family, as it seems like she is more interested in a father or older brother figure who can look after her rather than a boyfriend. Jenny is also shown to be quite fond of writing stories, as she literally writes a fanfiction story about a princess similar to Celica, but shoehorns in a part where the heroine is reunited with her long-lost father. This reveals that Jenny is a bit of a dreamer, and maybe that she has some talent for storytelling. You know, if I could, I'd like to meet my father. In Gaiden, Jenny is the first healer you get in Celica's route, and will be a very important unit in your team. Celica's team is filled with mages who drain their own health to cast spells, and until Celica herself reaches level 9 and learns Recover, Jenny is the only source of healing you have. Stat-wise, Jenny starts out with a decent base attack of 7, as well as some of the best base resistance in the game at 13, meaning magic will practically do nothing against her. Her base skill is low, but since spell hit rates are not affected by skill in Gaiden, this won't really hurt her at all. While Jenny is very offensive-oriented, with a very high attack growth of 40%, which is very good by Gaiden standards, she is also frail as tinfoil paper, with a base defense of 1, so she should not go anywhere near the front lines. In Gaiden, healers do not have the luxury of gaining experience for their actual healing, meaning you have to force Jenny to pick up some kills with the highly inaccurate Nosferatu spell. It is a good idea to have Jenny hit level 4 before you venture onto the Zombie Dragon Island, as Invoke is going to be a very useful spell to have there. You also want her to hit level 8 as quickly as possible, so she picks up the ever useful Physics spell, which has a global range in Gaiden. Before the endgame, you also really want to pick up Expel at level 12, as it is downright broken, removing all but two monsters on the map, which is going to help you against the zombie dragon hell you'll be encountering towards the later acts. Jenny is more often than not a big liability due to her frailness and the pitifully low 50% accuracy of Nosferatu, but she's still a must-have for Celica's party, and you should do everything in your power to keep her alive. Come Echoes, Jenny fills much the same role as she did in Gaiden. She is your first and only healer early on in Celica's group, and stat-wise, she also functions much the same. She has great attack and skill, but low hit point speed and defense. She starts out as a magical wall, but still shatters like glass in the face of physical threats. In Echoes, it's a lot easier for Jenny to gain levels. Nosferatu has received a much needed 10% buff to its accuracy, and the Recover spell now grants 9 experience when used. Theoretically, once Celica is able to heal at level 9, you can have Jenny and Celica heal each other infinitely until they are both at the level you want, meaning that as long as you don't care about your turn count, or time, you can have Jenny reach any level with enough Recover spam. 
Physic and Expel, two of Jenny's more important spells in the late game, have received some rather important changes and echoes. The Physic spell, which used to have global range, is now limited by magic, but because of Jenny's excellent magic stat and growth, it pretty much allows her to reach the target she wants to anyway, though she's no longer able to heal targets across the map. Expel, however, has been heavily nerfed, from removing everything but two monsters on the map, to having a 65% chance to remove monsters within its limited range. This makes it a lot more situational and requires Jenny to be closer to the threats she she's trying to eliminate, but as long as you keep her shielded, she should be good. Invoke, however, remains a very strong spell in Echoes. In Gaiden it was considered a bit of a burden due to the slow, clunky mechanics of the game, but the smooth gameplay changes to Echoes makes it a less of a headache to use. Because of their weak stats, the AI units will often target the missed soldiers over your other units, even if they could die, and the summoned soldiers will rarely steal kills and experience away from your other units, which is extremely helpful when dealing with big threats such as Necro Dragons. Once Jenny promotes to a Saint and learns Seraphim, she is able to assist in combat, and becomes especially adept at sniping big powerful monsters due to her high attack and effective damage output, though for the most part you'll mostly be spamming Recover, Physic and Invoke, with the occasional Expel when you're overwhelmed by strong monsters. Echoes also allows for a bit of versatility with the Villager's Fork, allowing Jenny to promote into a Villager and then be reclassed into something completely different. Mage Jenny may seem like a good option, but her lack of Excalibur or Aura kind of turns her into a discounted, more frail version of Bowie or Mei. She could technically become a decent Pegasus Knight, as her high strength and skill would allow her to perform decently, not to mention the Pegasus Knight promotional gains would patch up her shaky speed, but considering you get three very viable Pegasus Knights in Celica's route, this isn't a wonderful option for her either. Either, especially considering how important she is early on due to her healing. While there are many cute things you could do with Jenny, it is considered you keep her as her original class. The villager forks are best spent elsewhere. Just keep this little lolly safe and protected and she will be ready to roll anytime you want her to. Just so you know, I'd do whatever I could to help. Thank you for watching this Fire Emblem character spotlight. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and a comment, it really helps out the channel a lot. I would like to give a special shout out to Master Enix. He has been very helpful in sending me important material that I need for my spotlight, such as in-game voice files and the like. He has a YouTube channel where he posts a lot of different content, some of it Fire Emblem related. I have thrown a link in the video description if you want to check him out. I would also like to thank my other Patreon supporters as well. Anyone of bronze tier or higher will automatically be listed at the end of my spotlights and certain other videos. I am very grateful for your continued support. Thank you so much. The beautiful art and design you see created in this video was made by my designer, Mina Tangerina, and my script editors, Nasiro and Sonagi, helped me fine-tune the script for the spotlight. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Vin Manx, and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye!